underway to replace the piping under the church. The bathrooms are now functioning and we thank you for your patience. Please see the bulletin for further information regarding this project. Members of our Faith Enrichment and Social Ministries committees will be at the doors of church to greet you. Be sure to say hello. Lent is the church's gift to us, an opportunity to reflect deeply on how we live and relate. During Lent, we discern for what we need to repent, and we make a conscious choice for new life. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Wheeland. Father will be assisted by Deacon Ed Giblin. Please join in the entrance hymn, hymn number 879, Forgive Our Sins. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves for this continued journey of Lent, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us call to mind our need for repentance. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have seen him in my, in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, and I have had through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I beseech, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, who pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We call forth our kindergartners through fourth grade for the special liturgy of the word.
A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, here I am. God said, come no nearer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, but when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, what is his name, what am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, this is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Please join in singing the responsorial psalm in the Green Gather hymnal number 100. The Lord is kind and merciful. Number 100. Merciful, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being, bless God's name. Bless the Lord, and forget not God's benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. God pardons all your iniquities and comforts your sorrows, redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful, merciful, and gracious is our God. Slow to anger abounding in kindness. 
The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the, the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them and they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did and suffered death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example and they have been written down as a warning to us upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, Whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Repent, says the Lord, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think because these Galileans suffered in this way they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them? Do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said, to them, he said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we move further and further into Lent, I think it's always a good idea to try and see how Jesus lived his life, because it reminds us that Lent is the 
It means springtime, but it's also the time for you and me to come back to Jesus the Lord. This, of course, is the year of faith. And today, our liturgy proposes three different things that you and I should be doing to remedy our sins. First of all, we should be praying. And the second thing is we should be fasting. We should be doing things that we find hard. <clears throat> we should be giving up things that we really like because that puts an element of sacrifice onto our fasting. And then, of course, we have the idea of giving alms. And we have the little containers in which you can put your change or your silent money, and you can help and feed people in the third world because of that. Our focus needs to be on Christ. And what we need to do is to repent. We have to turn back to God. As the office tells us during the week, <clears throat> I would rather have the sinner turn back to God rather than I causing them to die. So what we need to do is to remove regrets that we have. We need to remember that the strength that you and I have is not mine, it is really the Lord Jesus. And today in the first reading, we see how God watches the world. There were about three quarters of a million Jewish people who had grown up in Egypt. They'd been there over 450 years. And finally, the Egyptian kings caused them to work as slaves. And of course, they kept praying to Almighty God, and God saw that they needed to be liberated. So he sent Moses and Aaron, and they went into the Egyptian king, the Pharaoh, and they told him the message that God had given them. But the Pharaoh didn't know Almighty God. He said, I can't begin to allow you to do what your king, what your Lord has asked. And of course, Almighty God responded by having different plagues, one more serious than the other. And finally, the plague that really caused them to let the Jewish people go was the plague where the eldest son and the firstborn animal all through Egypt, they were killed by Almighty God. And that finally meant that they were liberated. Paul today tells us that we need to call attention to the Lord. In fact, the whole Old Testament points to one person, and that is Jesus Christ. Some of the Jewish people, of course, they did evil. Again, not following the Lord's instructions. Some of them grumbled. Some of them complained. And as a result, for 40 years, they had to wander in the Arabian Peninsula. And they went around and around and around and around. And they were fed by Almighty God. They were fed manna. They were also fed little quail. And when all of them had passed on, then the Jewish people who were born during those 40 years, they went into the promised land. And the result was that Almighty God showed Moses the promised land, but he himself did not enter it. And so our fig tree today reminds us that Lent is a time for us to turn back to Almighty God. We need to be very serious about our faith. Sometimes, you know, we will take our faith for granted, 
or we'll say, well, I have many years yet to live, and I'll just put off returning to Almighty God. That's not the proper attitude. What we should have is the attitude that Jesus wants us to have, and that is, make this the best Lent you ever had because it might just be the last Lent you will ever have. We need to realize that we are called to be pleasing to the Lord. That's what the Eucharist is all about. And it reminds you and me that it helps us to pardon our sins. It reminds us that here we are fed by Almighty God. The bread is changed into his body. The wine is changed into his blood. And that is something that you and I really need to believe. We also need to be very, very humble. And that's not a very popular virtue. What we like to do is to say, well, I did it my way. Well, that's not what Almighty God wants. What he wants is he wants it done his way. And that is the important thing. And if you want an example of humility, I can't give you a better example than Jesus himself. Here we have God the Son. He is asked by his Father to come and add to his divinity a human body and a human soul. And what a come down that is for him. He has to come down to our level. He has to come down to where we are so that we can be lifted up to his level. And that is a beautiful example of humility. It reminds us just who we are. And we need to make sure that we carry out the mystery so that we can really live our life completely. And the big thing about the year of faith is the sacrament of penance. Some people, of course, they come to Eucharist every single day. Wonderful. But I think if we do that, what we should be doing is make sure that I get to penance at least once a month. You might say, oh, that's too much. I don't think so. I like to go every week because it reminds me just who the Lord is. He is the Lord. He is the creator. He is my God. And that is why it is so important during, before the sacrament, or be, I should say before the Second Vatican Council, we used to hear confessions, that was 50 years ago, we used to hear confessions for four hours on a Saturday. And that was a regular feature. But as each year went by, there's fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer people came. And the result today is that on March the 26th, which is Tuesday of Holy Week, we are having all throughout the Diocese of Rochester the Sacrament of Penance from 12.30 to 7.30 at night. Seven hours during which we have a time to come back to the Lord. And what's going to be the result? The result will be that, <coughs> that on Easter Sunday, <clears throat> you and I will be able to really come back to the Lord. We will come to him and share with him the fact that we are once again his people.
This morning, we celebrate with our catechumens and candidates a part of the ritual for entrance into the church called the scrutinies. The purpose of the scrutinies is mainly spiritual and are intended to purify the catechumens and candidates, to strengthen and to make them firm in their decisions so that they may remain more closely united with Christ. While the intention of the scrutinies are specifically addressed to the catechumens and candidates, they are also addressed to each one of us as we progress on our own Latin journey of faith. We call forward the members of the RCIA and RCIC candidates and catechumens, along with their sponsors and catechists, as they are seeking full membership into the church. My brothers and sisters of Holy Cross Parish, I invite you to join me in prayer for these catechumens and candidates and ask that the Lord will give them a spirit of repentance, a sense of sin, and true freedom of, as of the children of God. Catechumens and candidates, we invite you to pray also. You have been chosen. Bow your heads and please kneel in prayer. The Church has confidently chosen these people. May they successfully complete their long preparation. Let us pray that they will be ready and will find Christ in his sacraments. Our response to the intercessions is, Lord, spare your people that these catechumens and candidates may keep the word of God in their hearts and learn to understand it more deeply, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord spare, spare your, your people. people. That they may learn to know Christ, who came to save what was lost, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord spare, spare your people. That they may humbly confess themselves to be sinners, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord spare, spare your people. That the Holy Spirit, who searches every heart, may help them to overcome their weakness through his power, we pray to the Lord. Lord, spare your people. That we ourselves, in preparation for the Easter feast, may seek a change of heart. We give ourselves to prayer and persevere in our good works, we pray to the Lord. Lord, spare your people. For throughout the whole world, whatever is weak may be strengthened, whatever is broken, restored, and whatever is lost, found and whatever is found, redeemed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, spare your people. That all those who have died may be welcomed by Christ into the presence of his Father, especially Joseph Augustinelli, and for John Gallagher, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, spare your people. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. we pray to the Lord. Lord, spare your people. God, our Father, you sent your Son to be our Savior. These catechumens and candidates are now called in new standards, eternal standards. May the word of the Lord change their lives and help them to acknowledge the sin and weaknesses that burden them. Keep them from relying too much on themselves and never let the power of evil deceive them. Free them from the spirit of falsehood help and help them recognize any evil within themselves that with hearts cleansed from sin they may advance on the way to salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We'd ask the congregation to stand and we'd ask you to put up your hands in the form of prayer over these elect. Lord Jesus, you have opened the hearts of those chosen ones to honestly confess their faults and to ask your forgiveness. In your love, free them from evil, restore their health, satisfy their thirst, 
and give them peace. By the power of your name, which we call upon in faith, stay with them and save them. Touch their hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit, that they may come to know the Father, and in truth, which expresses itself in love. For you live and reign forever and ever. God bless. Our second collection today is for capital improvement and debt reduction. Please join in the offertory hymn, hymn number 852 at that first Eucharist.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to the right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewal and purifying of their hearts that freed from disorder of affection, they may de so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we are claimed. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with our apostolic administrator and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and uh, we pray a graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We have in our midst today individuals seeking entrance into our Catholic faith. Would those candidates and catechumens from our RCIA and RCIC program please come forward? Because they are not yet able to fully share in the meal of the Lord, they will be dismissed to go to another place to continue to reflect on the word of God as spoken to us in today's scriptures. They ask that you keep them in your prayers. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the word of God, which you have shared with us today. Be assured of our loving support and prayers for you. We look forward to the day when you will share fully in the Lord's table. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with all of us. Let us offer, let us offer each other a sign of praise.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my show shall be healed.
Are there any ministers of communion bringing the Blessed Sacrament to members of our parish community who can't be with us this morning? We have a special prayer for our Holy Father, who has retired, and for the Cardinals, who will be making a very, very spirit-filled decision for our church. Lord Jesus Christ, Supreme Pastor of your church, we thank you for the ministry of, blessed, of Pope Benedict XVI and the selfless care in which he has led us his successor of Peter and your vicar on earth. Good Shepherd, who founded your church on the rock of Peter's faith and has never left your flock unattended, look with love upon us now and sustain your church in faith, hope, and charity. Grant, Lord Jesus, in your boundless love for us, a new pope for your church who will please you by his holiness and lead us joyfully to you, who are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high. We humbly entreat you, O God, that what is being brought about in us in the mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, after the 10 a.m. Mass, all are invited to our Lenten family gathering to be held in the gym, an opportunity to renew Catholic Lenten traditions. All are welcome. Celebration of the Green is next Saturday, March 9th, 2013, in Holy Cross Gym and Beacon Place. This evening of Irish food, music, and fun will benefit the children who attend Holy Cross Preschool and Summer Adventure. Tickets are available in the parish office or at the school office. This Friday, March 8th, is our annual soup supper hosted by the Holy Cross teens and this year benefiting the Og family. Please join us for an evening of friendship, food, and faith. Stations of the Cross will follow at 7.30 p.m. Our Eastern Greece, Sherlock, Lenten pilgrimage continues this Thursday at 7 p.m. at our Mothers of Sorrow Church, where the topic will be healing. Deacon Dick Lombard and his wife, Rose Marie, will lead us in a time of prayer, music, reflections, and ceremony to help us deepen our faith this Lent. Please see our bulletin or website at holycrossrochester.org for all parish details. There, 
The coffee hour today will be in both the parish center and in Deacon Place in conjunction with the Lenten family gathering. And please join in the recessional hymn, hymn number 626, There's a Wilderness in God's Mercy. I want to congratulate our seventh and eighth grade basketball girls team who is with us today and who had a very great year. We bless them and we congratulate them for their spirit. I need to call your attention to the parking lot. Many people, when they come in, park in the outer lane closest to the church. There are three other lanes that are closer to the grass area. When they park in that outside lane by the church and go all the way back, it blocks off all that parking space uh, that is between them and the grass. And it does not allow people to park there. We've actually had people who have come and gone home because there's been no parking on some of the bigger days. So please think of your neighbor, your members of your community, and just fill in. I think some people think they're going to get out sooner. So as a penalty, I will start preaching 25 minutes if we do not solve this problem. Some say, what, what difference does it make you do anyway? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.